So, the last time a set of our characters were in Manhattan, it wasn't really a memorable trip. It was okay, just really forgettable. However, the gift of the Mod Pie was such a vast improvement over Made in Manhattan. And it's not just solely because of Pinkie Pie, but the chemistry of her zany off-the-wall personality mixes so well with Rarity's more high-class and prissy personality. Not only that, but Mod's non-existent personality seamlessly blends together with Rarity and Pinkie's personalities that it makes for one funny episode. The absolute best running gag of the episode was witnessing background ponies reacting to Pinkie's antics. Most of the time, we only see her friends watching Pinkie's crazy mannerisms. But here, we get to see a whole block of ponies in a huge town like Manhattan stopping what they're doing just to see what the heck is going on. And I love how it's not just her mannerisms that catch everyone's attention, but when she pulls out the party cannon several times, we get to see everyone's reaction, rather than just Rarity and Mods. But to me, the best scene of the Manhattanites watching Pinky go berserk was when she was in front of the pouch store. Not only were her facial expressions against the glass creative and funny, but I honestly thought for a brief second that the police pony was going to arrest her for disturbing the peace or something. Thankfully it didn't happen, but the possibility of Pinky running from the law has so many potential comedic ideas. Now, Mod's few scenes with Rarity knew exactly how to handle the characters. Rarity is a proper pony who knows it's rude to tell someone that they don't care for what they're talking about, and seeing her struggle to act interested in Mod's stories paid off. In fact, the best scene between the duo was when Rarity asked Mod how she met Boulder, and Mod's reply was, It was a dark and stormy night. Little did I know that my life was about to change forever. Just hearing a dramatic opening like that being said in such an uninterested voice was gold. Another thing that this episode pulled off well were the movie references interwoven into the story. They weren't in your face, but just subtle enough that a few older fans could still get a few chuckles out of it. I like the reference to Raiders of the Lost Ark. Big, which was a great way to slip in the show's theme song with the father and son on the piano. And then back with Rarity and Maud, I like the reference of the good, the bad, and the ugly when they are in the flea market. And other than Pinky's antics making for an interesting day for the Manhattan ponies, I think the highlight of the episode was in the flea market when Rarity started to act just like Pinkie Pie. Just seeing someone like Rarity hopping in place, talking at ludicrous speed like Pinky, and then bouncing off the walls like a pinball is a sight you really have to witness for yourself. And then for her to go immediately back to her regular personality to finish her sentence was the best way to cap off the joke. But honestly, in the midst of all the comedic elements of the episode, it was a great homage to the gift of the Magi. And no, I didn't figure that out just because of the title. The weird part is, it's not only one of the best homages to Gift of the Magi I've seen, but it's not even a Christmas themed episode. I have to give the writers a lot of credit for doing that. And during the picnic scene when they exchanged gifts, I really thought Maud had gotten Pinky somewhat of a mini party cannon for easier mobility. But of course, the cupcake scented confetti makes more sense. As for the end of the episode, using Maud to scare both Rarity and the Shady Dealer was actually kind of interesting. Other than her ability to pulverize a giant boulder within seconds, Maud's not that intimidating to me. But I love how scared both Rarity and the dealer became of Maud when all she was doing was staring at them. But to them, it was like she was staring straight into their soul. And Maud's weird teleporting power reminded me a lot of Jason Voorhees. Yes, I know, I'm referencing Friday the 13th in an MLP review. Wait a minute. The 8th Friday the 13th movie had Jason stalking people in Manhattan. But I loved how Rarity managed to convince the shady dealer that Maud was beyond angry enough to reduce him to a quivering puddle. Other than her flirtatious nature that we've seen throughout the show, and the mini lesson that she gave Applejack back in season 3, it's really cool to see that Rarity has some pretty good acting skills. And of course, the main reason why Rarity was even in Manhattan in the first place, it was nice to see that she finally found the perfect spot to open up another branch of her boutique, only to discover that she was now tied up in sisterly gift-giving with Maude and Pinky every year. 
one thing I'd like to add before my final thoughts. Why Maiden Manhattan is forgettable and why the Gift of the Mod Pie works so well is because Rarity and Pinky can play off each other so well while Applejack and Rarity really need another element to make standalone episodes with them work. In fact, in Season 4's Trajia, I was so uninterested in Rarity and Applejack's subplot that I just wanted to see more of Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash the whole episode. I mean, there's little chemistry between Applejack and Rarity, but not to the extent that Rarity has with Pinkie Pie. Even with Coco Pamel present in Maiden Manhattan, Rarity and Applejack just really didn't play off each other as well as Rarity and Pinkie did in The Gift of the Mod Pie. And as it's pretty easy to guess, I loved The Gift of the Mod Pie. Everything from the gags and jokes to the clever subtle movie references and the lesson about gift giving and how it doesn't matter what you give someone as long as there's love in your heart behind the gift. But the fact the writers did that in a non-Christmas themed episode was pretty cool. I just really have to give credit to them for using that idea in a regular episode. Am I saying it's a particularly bold choice? No, but I will say that it was a pretty clever course of action. And I'm pretty impressed that the writers managed to tell a classic story in their own unique way. The comedic elements of the first two acts were so entertaining that they distracted from the main plot, but in a good way. Instead of a blatant copy of the original story, we were given a much more lively, fast-paced, and zany version that can make you appreciate just how much and how long the original material has touched millions of people. And again, my favorite part of the episode is a close tie between Pinky freaking out in front of the pouch door and Rarity turning into Pinky for a brief moment in the flea market. The whole episode was such a well-written blend of comedy and a touching moment between sisters that it's no wonder it gets a green flag rating. This was one of the funniest episodes I've seen in a while and I'm glad season 6 is off to such a good start. Here's to more strong episodes for the rest of the season. I'm Checkered Flag, I'll see you the next time when I get back from the track.